Young Everton uh, Grasshopper. Today we are going to teach you to slice and to chop your audio into your own uh, creation. All right, let's get it. So right here, you can see I've collected all these different uh, little snippets of audio. Okay, these are the, these are my little uh, snippets that I'm going to cut up into samples and rearrange into a song. Ableton Sample Slicer, or the slicing slice to new MIDI track, what it does is it takes the audio that you have, it slices it up across the MIDI keyboard or, or a, a MIDI pads or whatever you want to use um, so that you can rearrange the audio to make it your own and have fun with it, right? It's the easiest, the easiest type of slicing to do, or I should say maybe the, the most basic type of slicing to do, is to use a drum loop, okay? When I right click on this audio and I make sure that the warp button is pushed, okay? I, I have this option where it says slice to new MIDI tracks. So I'm gonna hit that. And then what you get is you get these options. You can slice via a warp marker. So that's what these little guys are, okay? And it looks like it really just captured every single um, transient here. You can slice via the transient. So what it'll do is it will look at the audio, analyze the audio, and every single time there's like a ramp or a spike in the audio, it will create a slice. You can do it per bar. So now you would have this section, this section, this section and this section if I chose a bar. Half a bar, obviously, you know, the different grays here. Uh, all the way down to a 30 second, okay? When using these drum loops though, because it's so concise, why not just use transient? What it'll do is now it'll make a slice. Every single time there's a new snap, it'll make a new slice, okay? And what it, what is a slice? A slice is going onto the piano roll as a, as a different key. So this would be like C, this would be C sharp, so on and so forth. So. In the slicing preset, we're going to focus just on the built-in slicing preset. All of these other ones are some, a lot of them are special effects. I, I just find them just pretty much annoying and useless. So in built-in, you're going to use the built-in feature. And what this is going to do is it's going to map this audio across the piano roll. So I'm going to hit OK. And what did it do? It's, it spat out this, this MIDI clip and this MIDI track. So let's take a look, let's take a look at what's going on here. Let's kind of bring this up and just take a look. When I play this, I've soloed this track. When I play this, it sounds exactly like the original, maybe a little bit more choppy, but it sounds just like the original. The reason it does that is it's kind of just showing you where all the samples are. And what you can do with this is you can, because these samples are all in different places, you could just take these and I'm gonna rearrange them real quick. And now you get this different result. So that's one way to rearrange your audio after you've sliced it, okay? But I, I find this to be very dry and zero fun. What's more fun is to have a MIDI controller or a MIDI keyboard or anything, it doesn't matter. And then you can play your samples over the MIDI keyboard. What happens when you slice audio is you create a drum rack. using At least using the built-in plugin, you create a drum rack and then you can see here are our slices. So starting from Starting from C1, that's where the first slice is. And moving chromatically up, you feel me? So now you can use your hands and your creativity to recreate the beat. So I'm gonna go off here, somewhere over here, and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna turn on my click track. So now, th now with the click track, I can listen to the click track and I can play. Okay, so I've just played a little bit of, just played a little beat here, all right? And now I can just loop kind of the parts that I liked from it. So that's like an intro, I have just split that real quick, and then here we go. All right, so that's my new loop, okay? I've just reinterpreted what this was. All right, so now that we've got that finished, we've got this little loop over here. Let's move on to this next audio. Now, if I drag audio that's too that's that's long into Ableton, what'll happen is when I right click on the bar and I go to slice to MIDI, it won't appear. I have to turn on warping. So when you turn on warping with a long sample, it asks you, would you like to keep keep the clip's current timing? If you hit no, what'll happen is Ableton will try to guess what the BPM of this audio is. 
a lot of the times it's wrong. This isn't even this because I just sampled this. This has nothing to do with 91 beats per minute. In fact, likely this was uh, you know this was a conducted piece of music, meaning there was no machine timing involved in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit yes to insert warp markers that retains its current timing. So when I hit yes, what's going to happen is it's it's going to just be like all right. So here's these warp markers, and this is what uh, the original timing of the audio is. It, it will not warp the audio yet. Okay. When you hit no, it will warp the audio and try to try to make it fit in the song. It's just dumb. Don't even use that. Hit yes. Okay. Now I've got some warp markers, but it doesn't matter. It's not changing the speed. This is what this sounds like. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to right click on the top. And now you can see that Slice the New MIDI track has appeared. So in this case, these are longer notes. If I use transient, it's going to divide this into a million slices, 66 slices. I don't want that. What I want to do is I'm going to hit a bar, okay? Now, what, what it's going to do is now each one of these musical bars, it's like we've got 13 bars, are going to become their own slice. Let's see what that did. So I hope you can you can start to think about like how this could become musicals. All right, there you go. Now you've got a, now you've got this slice thing. And remember, you can remix it either way. You could also go in here and just move these around, blah 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 blah, if you want. And it's gonna it's gonna play them in different orders. But let's take this a step further. I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this now. When I play these, when I play these different slices, okay, so this is the first one. Notice how the sample doesn't start right when I put my finger down. That's because the playhead of this slice is right here. So, so a lot of the times you're going to take a slice of audio and you're going to want to move the playhead for each one of these slices. What is in a slice? Well, in this mode, when you're using the built-in uh, preset, it creates a drum rack, and in each one of these drum racks, we have an instance of Simpler, okay? So in this instance of Simpler, you can see the playhead right here for each one of these tracks, or for each one of these samples, or slices. So now I can move this playhead over, and now I've got that beautiful, right when I put my finger down, that beautiful... And if I want more of an attack, I can move it... Right? So slice two. That's kind of nice. Slice three. I like that. Slice four could have a little bit more balls, so I'm going to move it over. I kind of like that. And see, slice five, we have a different chord that starts right here, so I'd rather hit that. Okay, so now I've got... And notice also when I put my finger down on a key, or if I was using my MIDI, con my, my uh, computer keyboard, it would do the same thing. It snaps to each one of these simplers. It's moving through the drum rack, right? Just by pressing the key. So I don't have to worry about which one I'm looking at, okay? And the way that you control that is by using this auto select um, little feature down here. If you don't want it to move every time you hit a key, turn that off. Okay, so I'm back on slice six. And as you can see, I mean, this is this is just my preferences. I want these to have an attack. Okay, so now I've got all these samples made with my keyboard. So now I can move over here to where my drum beat is. I'm going to make a couple iterations of this drum beat just for the fun of it. And um, a really fast way to do that, uh, in case you don't know, uh, just Command-D. Duplicate. All right, so I'm going to loop this section, and I'm going to do a little jam. Man, that was, <laughs> that was easy. All right, so now I know what I want to do, and I'm going to record it. All right, 
So now I have my little jam. I can quantize it to make sure it's just right. Oh, missed that first note there. All right, cool. So now, boom. Now the, let's just let's hope that workflow is 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 getting to be a little bit more um, easily understood. So let's move on to the acoustic guitar. So I recorded an acoustic guitar here. And as you can see, there's a little bit more defined transients. So what we could do is we could try. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's find out. Got to turn on warping. Remember, got to hit yes, or else it's going to really scramble your audio up if it's a long sample. Hit yes. Right click. I'm going to go down to slice to new MIDI track. And let's just see what happens when we do transient. 85 slices. Eh, still a lot. Let's just go ahead and do, and, and do a bar. The transient, it, it will show you, the reason I know this is because it will show me how many slices it would make, okay? So what I want to do is I'm just going to go down to bar, and it says, okay, it's going to give me 10 slices. All right, so I can move those markers around to get the kind of chords that I'm looking for. All right, so I'm going to hit okay. Now it's going to spit out this, this manageable amount of slices. You know, 10 slices, that's manageable, okay? So let's just listen to these different slices and see what we got. All right, so the first slice, obviously... Second slice. Third slice is too far down, so I'm going to move it back and try to get this this guy. And then I did some uh, I did some up up strumming, or or yeah, up strumming. So I kind of want to get some of those. Right? All right, so now I got my samples. <laughs> That's kind of fun. All right, so let's listen to this and let's come up with another part. So I'm going to turn this down just a little bit so I can hear what's going on. about the end there but yeah you get the idea so now I've got this new this new track and it's got some uh, I've been hitting the keys a little hard I mean obviously I think that that track is just quiet compared to everything else I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit okay so now as you can see we've got these three tracks made, and these are this is all MIDI information. Remember, I can go and change this later. That's the beauty of this of using MIDI to slice. Okay, and now the final track I have here is I've got some extra percussive stuff going on. Okay, now this is a is is something I recorded. So when I hit warp, it's going to ask me uh, what I want to do. I'm going to keep its timing. Okay, so now I can go in here, and I can go to slice to new MIDI, and this time I definitely want to use the transient built-in preset, okay? Because boom, 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 boom. 16 slices, this is gonna work out really great for us. Right. Boom. So now I have these slices, and let's take a look at what they are. Good slice. That's a good slice. Wow, it almost laid out everything perfectly on these, on these keys. So something from this little kit that uh, that we've just created has caught my attention. I really like this this sample. Okay, I want to turn this sample into a bass line. I know that might sound weird to some of you, but this is <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to take this slice. I'm actually going to drag it out of the drum rack and create its own track with it. Okay, and then in this track, I'm going to click on this bar and I'm going to ungroup it. So what that's going to do is it's just going to isolate this. Just isolating that sample, right? All right. So now I can go in here and I can I can play a bass line. All right, 
right, so I kind of like some of that. Maybe this, maybe this little part at the end. And I, what I did right there is I selected um, all the notes and I hit uh, Command U to to uh, quantize them. All right, so now that I have this groove, I want to show you one more thing before before we sign off, and that's that you can go into these drum racks and you can actually easily change the panning of these slices. So obviously all the samples are sitting on top of each other. It's all in mono. It's all just horribly mixed. So what we can do is I'm going to go to this acoustic track. Right? And I'm going to sample by sample kind of pan this around. So the samples I, I was using was uh, 7, 8, and 1. So in sample 1, if I go over to controls, you can see that panning will magically appear, right? So I'll put that over to the left, I'll hit sample 7, and as you can see, I'm still on this second page. Controls, right? It's just so great when I, when I step on the sample, it magically goes to that page, right? So I'm gonna pan that over to the right, and maybe this one a little to the left. So now we've got... Feel me? All right, so here's my groove. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you got use out of this. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe, you know what to do. Um, thanks to my Patreon subscribers for allowing me to be able to get the quality of this channel up, and as you can tell, I've got a new camera. And it's all thanks to you. So, uh, Patreon subscribers, thank you so much. Much love, everybody. See you next time.